Today is Monday, October 7th, 2027. At this time, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Ms. Trish? Council Member Adams? Here. Council Member Maldonado? Here. Council Member Buccellato? Here. Council Member Neal? Here. Council Member Larson? She is on her way. She did notify me. Vice Mayor Mendoza? Here. Mayor Walter? Here. Mayor, we have a quorum. Thank you. At this time, please rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, we'll go ahead and open up our first call to the public. Is there anybody in the audience or online that would like to speak at this time? Go ahead and closing the first call to the public. We need a motion to adjourn to Mail Ranch Community Facilities District number one. I'm going to make a motion that we adjourn to Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District number one. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? That motion carries. Item A is a public hearing on feasibility report for projects, and this is assessment area 11. This is units 66 and 59A. Mr. Carl Dudding. Thank you, um, Madam Chairman, Board. Uh, we're excited tonight um, to bring you some new developments in Merrill Ranch. We have two. Um, we're going to start off with Area 11 and CFD1. Normally, when we bring this to Council, we package it as one agenda item. And tonight, we broke it out into three items, so a little more clarity for the public. So this is uh, item A. Um, as I said, so we buffed it out, and uh, so item A will be the feasibility hearing. Item B is uh, the board's consideration to adopt the feasibility report, and item C, consideration for special, spe special assessment bond issuance. Uh, area 11 in District 1 has two units, 59B and 66. There's a total of 215 lots sitting on 58 acres. Lot assessments will be 5,000. Uh, the improvements are estimated to be completed by the end of this year, and those include the streets, curbs, sidewalks, and signage. Uh, the cost of these improvements are a th little over 3.1 million, and the bond amount is $1,075,000. Estimated interest rate of 6.25, and as always, there's no prepayment penalty to pay off your assessment. 59B is located just north of Hunt Highway to the west of Felix Road in the Parkside Anthem area. It has 139 lots on 54 acres, and those improvements are 2.1 million. And here's a little bigger blow up of where it's located. Uh, unit 66 has 76 lots sitting on 24 acres. It's in the Sun City Anthem side with improvement cost of $1 million. And it is just to the east of Sun City Boulevard right before it makes the curve to the east. There it is. Um, I also wanted to let you know that uh, Jack Leeper um, from Stiefel is here tonight. Uh, Paul Gales, the Bond Council, is here, and Todd from Pulte, if you guys have any questions. All 
All right, thank you, Carl. At this time, I am going to open up the public hearing, and it is open up to council and public regarding any questions or comments at this time. Board Member Larson is joining. We are on item A of the Community Facilities District Number 1 with the public hearing on the feasibility report for projects um, assessment area 11, unit 66 and 59A. All right, I do not see any questions or comments. I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing portion. And item B is resolution number MRCFD1-150-24. This is discussion and possible action on a resolution of the Board of Directors of Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District number one, approving and authorizing the execution and delivery of an 11th Amendment and waivers assessment area 11, units 66 and 59B for district development Financing Participation, Waiver and Intergovernmental Agreement, Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number 1, authorizing and ratifying the giving of notice of hearing with respect to approving a feasibility report, which includes identifying the public's infrastructure of the projects, the areas to be benefited, the expected method of financing and the systems of providing revenues to operate and maintain the projects, all as provided in such report. Approving such feasibility report and resolving the intent thereto and ordering the work with respect thereof. Mr. <coughs> Carl Dudding. Um, nothing to add, Madam Chairman. Mr. Dudding, I did have one question that I just wanted to bring forward because our council had talked about it before on the floor, and that was in regards to the CFDs. Um, do you have any updates on that in regards to um, those prior discussions? I think you're talking about the GEO bonds? Um, that's wrapping it up so that way we're not adding any more yeah. um, um, to that we're yeah. closing it down because we paid for that infrastructure right um they're close but i don't have anything to deliver tonight on the floor okay yeah but it will be before you very shortly okay thank you so much i appreciate Bye. that all right is there any discussion any questions or comments all right with that we need a motion I make a motion that we approve resolution number MRC FD1 150 24 is written. Second. All in favor? Aye. And all opposed? And the motion carries. Item C is resolution number MRC FD1 151 24. Discussion and possible action on a resolution of the Board of Directors of Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number 1, approving the assessment diagram and method of assessment with respect to Area 11 and providing the levy of the related assessment and authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $1,075,000 aggregate principal amount of the special assessment lien bonds. This is for assessment Area 11 and approving the form thereof authorizing the execution and delivery of an indenture of trust and security agreement, a bond purchase contract, a continuing disclosure undertaking, and certain other documents with respect to the bonds. Approving a preliminary official statement relating to the bonds and approving and authorizing the execution and delivery of a final official statement relating to the bonds and adopting post-issuance continuing disclosure compliance procedures in connections with issuance of obligations of the district. Mr. Carl Dudding. 
Uh, Madam Chairman, I have nothing to add. That wasn't covered in the item A. Okay. Board, is there any discussion regarding this item? Seeing no further discussion, we do need a motion. Make a motion to approve resolution MRCFD 1.151-24. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And all opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Item D is approval of the March 18th, June 3rd, and June 17th, 2024, Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number 1 Special Meeting Minutes. Ms. Trish Buchanan. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council, those minutes are in your packet. I'm here for any questions. Board, do you have any questions? Seeing none, we need a motion. I make a motion that we approve the March 18th, June 3rd, June 17, 2024, Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number 1 Special Meeting, meeting Minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That motion carries. We need a motion to adjourn from Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number 1. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We need a motion to adjourn to Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number 2. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We are adjourned. Item A is a public hearing and feasibility report for projects. <coughs> Assessment Area 11, this is Unit 308, Mr. Carl Dudding. Uh, Madam Chairman, members of the board, uh, CFD2 has an Area 11 coming online tonight as well. Um, it has one unit, 30B, it has 159 lots sitting on 42.37 acres. Um, it's a 5,000 lot assessment, um, estimated to be completed by the end of this month. It's streets, curbs, sidewalks, and signage. Uh, cost of improvements are a little over 2.1 million. The bond amount is 795,000 with an estimated interest rate of 6.25 with no payoff penalty. This unit is located to the east and south of the hospital, and it butts up to Hunt Highway and south of Franklin. At this time, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing, just as in CFD1. If there's anybody in the public or any of the board members that have any questions or comments, please speak at this time. Seeing nobody on the board, online, or in public, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Moving on to item B, which is resolution number MRCFD2 250-24. This is for discussion and possible action on a resolution of the Board of Directors of Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District 2 approving and authorizing the execution and delivery of an 11th Amendment and Waivers Assessment Area 11, Unit 30B, for District Development, Financing, Participation, and Intergovernmental Agreement, Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number 2, authorizing and ratifying the giving of notice of hearing with respect to approving a feasibility report, which includes identifying the public infrastructures of the projects the areas to be benefited, the expected method of financing and the systems of providing revenues to operate and maintain the projects, all as provided in such report, approving such feasibility report and resolving the intent, therefore, and ordering the work with respect thereto. Mr. Carl Dudding. Nothing to add, Madam Chairman. Board, do you have any questions or comments? With that, we need a motion. Make a motion to approve resolution MRCFD 2 250-24. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. 
Item C is resolution number MRCFD 2, 251-24. This is discussion and possible action on a resolution of the Board of Directors of Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District number two, approving the assessment diagram and method of assessment with respect to assessment area 11 and providing for the levy of the related assessment and authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $795,000 aggregate principal amount of special assessment lien bonds, assessment area 11 and approving the form thereof, authorizing the execution and delivery of an indenture of trust and security agreement, a bond purchase contract, a continuing disclosure undertaking, and certain other documents with respect to the bonds, approving a preliminary official statement relating to the bonds and approving and authorizing the execution and delivery of a final official statement relating to the bonds and adopting post-issuance continuing disclosure compliance procedures in connection with the continuance of obligations of the district, Mr. Carl Dudding. Uh, nothing to add further. With that, we need a motion. Make a motion to approve resolution MRCFD 2, 251-24. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And item D is approval of the June 3rd and 17th, 2024, Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District number two, special meeting minutes, Ms. Trish Buchanan. Chair, members of the board, the minutes are in your packet. I'm here to answer any questions. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, we need a motion. Make a motion to approve agenda item 8D as in David. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And all opposed? Motion carries. Need a motion to adjourn from Mill Ranch Community Facilities District to number two. So moved. Second. Item 10, we have a public hearing to receive comments regarding the loft pantry, which is located at 350 North Main Street, Florence, Arizona, received from Kathy Ellen Curry for an application for a Series 12 liquor license and discussion approval disapproval of forwarding a recommendation for approval or disapproval of said license to the Arizona Department of Liquor License and Control. Ms. Trish Buchanan. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council, the Town Clerk's Office posted the notice of the public hearing on September 17, 2024 of said location in accordance with the statutory requirements. Management has been notified of the October 7th public hearing. As of this reading, we have not received any public comment. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Curry are present if you should have any questions. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and open up the public hearing to receive comments regarding the loft and pantry. Council, do you have any comments or anything before? Public, do you have any comments or questions? I do not see anybody online either. With that, we need a motion. Make a motion to approve the forwarding of, of, a, of a recommendation for approval of said license to the Arizona Department of Liquor License and Control for the loft and pantry located at 350 North Main Street, Florence, Arizona. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And all opposed? Motion carries. Item B is presentation of the police challenge coin in recognition of solving vandalism at Heritage Park. Mr. Bruce Walsh. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members, if you don't mind, I'd like to go ahead and have Officer Williams, come up. <coughs> uh, Miguel, 
Foster, Smith, Foote, and Schaefer. Council, as always, I remain amazed at this police department. If you look at the slide that's up on the screen, this was some criminal damage that happened in the town of Florence in August. Um, I can go ahead and tell you that our staff and our officers were extremely upset that someone would go ahead and come into the town of Florence and create this kind of damage. I will tell you that the police officers and IT staff immediately started doing an investigation as to who would come into our town and do this kind of damage. I will tell you in a matter of four hours, we had started interviewing and had a suspect arrested within 24 hours. And that's why we're commending uh, these individuals over here um, today. I will go ahead and tell you that anybody that is set to go ahead and do this kind of damage in the town of Florence, we will find you and we will go ahead and prosecute you to the highest extent of the law. This kind of behavior in our town will not be tolerated. And I appreciate these individuals and their steadfast energy in finding out who did this and making sure that our town stays safe. Mayor, if I can get you and the council members to go ahead and come down, we're going to give you the challenge coin in which to go ahead and present uh, to these individuals. Mayor, council members, thank you so much. And once again, to our officers and IT staff. Oh, Dan, I didn't mention your name, did I? And Dan Helsdingen is part of the group as well. Um, I just want to uh, give you my absolute appreciation. When you put those badges on and for our team uh, over in IT, uh, we swore to go ahead and protect this community, and I just appreciate you guys' efforts in doing so. Council sometimes would come back and go ahead and say that um, um, they appreciate uh, you all being here, and probably more than that, your ownership in this town. This community is your community, and when something happens in it, you stand behind it. So again, my thanks to each and every one of you.
First and foremost, thank you for your patience with this. We had originally sent over a proclamation for Constitution Week, but we wanted to make sure that we recognize the importance and presentation in person. Thank you. So this is a proclamation for Constitution Week in 2024, and whereas September 17th, 2024, marks 237, the 37th anniversary of the drafting of the United States Constitution. And this is by the Constitutional Convention. Whereas it is fitting and proper to accord official recognition to the magnificent document and its memorial anniversary and to the patriotic celebrations, which will commemorate the occasion. Whereas Public Law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designating September 17th through September 23rd as Constitution Week. And it's celebrated in all of our schools as well. Now therefore, be it resolved that I, Tara Walter, Mayor of the Town of Florence, Arizona, by the virtue vested in me as the Mayor of the Town of Florence, do hereby recognize the week of September 17th to the 23rd as Constitution Week. And we encourage all citizens to pause and reflect on our unique heritage as Americans, reaffirm the ideals of our nation's founders, and to honor and respect the freedoms guaranteed to us through the Declaration of the Independence and the United States Constitution. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. So I would like you to say a few words as well, and I see that you're daughters of the American Revolutionary War. Thank you so much. Yes, I am, I'm Sue Record, the regent of the Casa Grande Valley of the Daughters of the American Revolution. And we have been um, an organization since the late 1800s. We um, encourage uh, historic preservation, patriotism, and education in our organization. Uh, we serve the entire, almost the entire Pinal County, which is a huge area. So I, I'm trying to start a chapter over here in Florence, and hopefully I'll uh, receive enough membership to do that. Thank you very much, Sue. Thank you. Can we take a picture now? <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. So this next proclamation I'm going to invite all of our officers up for. <laughs> all of you come on in. You guys, you guys are good to go. <laughs> this is a proclamation for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Whereas domestic violence is a prevalent public health problem which affects all communities regardless of age, gender, socioeconomic status, religion, nationality, or sexual orientation. Whereas over 61 million women and 53 million men have experienced psychological aggression by an intimate partner in their lifetime, and whereas one in two women and one in four men have experienced sexual violence, physical violence and or stalking by an intimate partner during their lifetime. And whereas 40.3% of children reported exposure to at least one form of family violence over their lifetimes, and 27.7% 
reported exposure to physical intimate partner violence. And whereas in 2022, there are 101 known domestic violence related fatalities across America, whereas promoting healthy, respectful, nonviolent relationships Communities can reduce the occurrence of intimate partner violence and prevent the harmful and long-standing effects of intimate partner violence on individuals, families, and communities. And, whereas Domestic Violence Awareness and Prevention Month provides the opportunities to enhance education, prevention, and intervention efforts around domestic violence and support organizations that provide advocacy efforts services, and assistance to victims. And whereas the Domestic Violence Awareness and Prevention Month, I stand with the tens of millions of people who have experienced domestic violence, and I want to thank first responders, service providers, victim advocates, and community members who work to ensure that every Arizonian can live in safety with dignity and respect. Now, therefore, I, Tara Walter, Mayor of the Town of Florence, do hereby proclaim October 2024 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and call upon all government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses, hospitals, colleges, students, parents, and citizens in the state of Arizona to support domestic violence survivors and take a stand against all forms of violence and abuse by joining the Lighting AZ Purple campaign and visiting ndv.az.gov and expanding the efforts to end domestic violence in Arizona. Yes, you can clap. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think we're going to, if it's okay, officers, can we keep you up here for the next one as well? Because I understand, and while I'm getting the next proclamation, would you like to recommend somebody to speak about the patch? Okay. Would you please speak about the patch? Yeah, so every year we, uh, we design a new patch for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, this year we reached out to community members and we have a new design for the patch. And it's, it doesn't only affect uh, women, but it does affect men. So on our patch, we have, it affects uh, 530 men a year and one in eight women every year. This patch was designed with members of our community in mind and they helped design the patch uh, for us to have our officers wear throughout the month of October. I have a proclamation for you as well. Perfect. <laughs> Whereas for 39 years annually in October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month has played an important role in helping to increase public awareness of this disease and to raise funds for research into its cause, prevention, treatment, and ultimately find a cure. And whereas during the month of October, Breast cancer survivors and those currently battling breast cancer are celebrated, encouraged to share their experiences, and are offered information and support, educating people about the importance of early detection, testing, and prevention are also integral parts of this annual campaign. And whereas while great progress has been made in the fight against breast cancer, it still affects the lives of Americans from every ethnic and religious background and in every community. And, whereas breast cancer is the second most common type of cancer in women, approximately one in eight will develop breast cancer over the course of their lifetime, and it is estimated that 310,000 new cases of breast cancer will be diagnosed just this year alone. And, whereas today, due to early detection and improving treatments, the overall breast cancer mortality rate continues to decrease over time, and the relative survival rate for women is now at 99% after five years of diagnosis. Currently, 
There are more than 3 million breast cancer survivors here in the United States, and whereas the American Cancer Society's Cancer Survivors Network provides a safe online connection where cancer patients and caregivers can find support, while the Road to Recovery program offers support by removing the barriers to quality health care, offering patient transportation and treatment, and there are many other programs to support plans offered nationwide to help those that are battling this disease. Now therefore I, Tara Walter, Mayor of the Town of Florence, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2024 to be Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I encourage all citizens to be mindful and participate in the activities that will aid in increasing awareness of what Americans can do to help prevent breast cancer as well as offer support to those who have been affected by who, by or who, have lost their lives in the battle of breast cancer. Thank you very much for presenting the patches as well. And Manager Walls, I'm going to have you come up for this. So this is 2024 Cities and Towns Week, which is a pretty exciting time as well. Whereas the citizens of the town of Florence rely on the town to experience high qualities of life in our community. Whereas the cities and towns in Arizona work 24 hours a day, seven days a week to deliver vital town services such as fire, police, and emergency medical response to ensure safe communities, and whereas cities and towns in Arizona also provide services and programs that enhance the quality of life for residents such as parks, utilities, street maintenance, sanitation and recycling services, libraries, community centers, recreational programs, and whereas it is important to the town of Florence to come to provide the excellent delivery of services and the programs that our citizens have come to expect in our community. Whereas it is one of the responsibilities of the town officials to ensure open and accessible government through frequent communication with citizens using a variety of avenues and means. And whereas through participation and cooperation, our citizens, community leaders, local businesses, and municipal staff can work together to ensure that these services are provided by the town and they remain at an exceptional level and quality. Now therefore be it resolved that the town of Florence joins with the Arizona League of Cities and Towns and fellow municipalities across the state of Arizona in declaring the week of October 13th as the Arizona Cities and Towns Week now, I know our staff has been up to a lot of things celebrating this week. Would you like to share a few? Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. October 13th through the 19th, that's when we're going to go ahead and celebrate the League of Cities and Towns with the things that your divisions are doing within the town of Florence. Uh, Jeff is going to be posting things uh, Monday through Friday. We're going to highlight the fire department, the police department, public works, community development, IT, legal, finance, <laughs> and the clerk's office. So please go to our website and check out some of the wonderful things that we are doing in the town. Your divisions are active in the town, and we want to celebrate that uh, with each and every one of you. So if you see us out and about in town, please stop by and say hello. We are going to be doing the same, and stop by the uh, website. Jeff, I'm going to let you say what the website is. 
Uh, Florence, <laughs> Florence, uh, Town of Florence, yes. <laughs> FlorenceAZ.gov. Everybody should know that. Check that out on the website. See what your agencies are out and about doing. And we promise we're going to be out uh, knocking on some doors, stopping in some businesses, and saying hello as well. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Can we take a quick picture? Yes, ma'am. All right. It's all like squishing. All right, for this next one, I'd like to invite Chief Snyder to come on over. And all of our amazing firefighters. So we have a proclamation for Fire Week that is coming up on October 6th through the 12th of 2024. And did you want to share something before or after? How about after? All right. October 6th through 12th is our 2024 Fire Prevention Week. Whereas the town of Florence is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all that are living in our town, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally, and homes are locations where people are at the greatest risk for fire. Whereas the focus of the National Fire Prevention Week for 2024 is smoke alarms, make them work for you. Whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reported home fires in half, and whereas Florence residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas Florence first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And Whereas Florence residents are responsive to public education measures and they're better able to take personal steps to increase their safety in regards to their home from fire. Whereas the week of October 6th through 12th, 2024 has been designated National Fire Prevention Week by the National Fire Protection Agency known as NFPA to educate the public on how to stay safe in the case of fire as well as how to prevent fires. Whereas the Florence Fire and Medical Department will be holding an open house Saturday, October 12th, 2024 from 1 to 4 at Fire Station 2 with a live fire demonstration at 3. Therefore, I, Tara Walter, Mayor of the Town of Florence, do hereby proclaim October 2nd to 12th, 2024 as Fire Prevention Week throughout this town and I urge all people of Florence to ensure that your smoke alarms work for you for Fire Prevention Week 2024 and always. Smoke detectors save lives. Thank you, appreciate that, Mayor Walters. Uh, although Fire Prevention Week is this week for the firefighters and the fire department, we like to say every day is Fire Prevention Week. This just highlights a focus on a particular topic, and it's, uh, it's not just making your smoke detectors work so that you get out after a fire. 
The, the idea is actually to prevent fires as well. So as much as we can draw attention to that, um, these life safety measures, like changing your batteries uh, when you um, annually change your batteries, and then also plan exit drills so your family knows how they're getting out and a place to meet once they get out. But um, this week, uh, this Saturday, the fire department's having an open house at Station 2, the Anthem Station over off Hunt Highway, uh, and there's a number of events going on. The, the staff has created some great events for kids. You can tour the fire station, and then we also have a uh, burn trailer there where we're going to show a live demonstration of a living room fire that can take place, what happens in sprinklered homes, and then it side by side what happens when they're non-sprinklered, and that's at 3 o'clock on Tuesday again at Station 2. Thank you. All right, item 11 is our consent agenda. And all items on the consent agenda will be handled by a single vote as part of the consent agenda unless a council member or a member of the public objects at the time the agenda item is called. Item A, accept the warrant register for the month of September 2024 in the amount of $3,297,218.60. Item B, Approval of September 3rd and 16th, 2024, Town Council meeting minutes. Item C, receive and file the following board and commission minutes. One, Charles Whitlow Rodeo Grounds Advisory Committee minutes of October 2nd, 2024. Two, Community Services Advisory Committee minutes of August 8th, 2024. Three, Historic District Advisory Commission Minutes of August 28, 2024. Four, Planning and Zoning Commission Minutes of August 15, 2024. And five, Florence Teen Council Minutes of August 14, 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our consent agenda. Is there anybody on council or public that would like any item removed at this time? Seeing none, we need a motion. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 12 is our town manager report. Mr. Bruce Walls. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council. Um, the manager's report is in the packet. That's a lot of what we have been doing. Uh, through the month, but I'd also like to add that we continue to go outside the town of Florence and meet with other town managers, other city managers, um, trying to take advantage of some of their knowledge and go ahead and bring it back to the town uh, to see how we can go ahead and benefit from some of that stuff here. So we continue to go ahead and build partnerships. Thank you. Regarding our department head reports, is there any member of council that has any questions at this time or comments? 
Okay, thank you very much for all the effort and putting them together. Item 14 is our second call to the public. Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak at this time, either in person or online? All right, we're closing the second call to the public. Call to the council for current events only. Council Member Adams. Thank you, Mayor. I had a couple of things in going through the notes of uh, the town manager report. Um, I did, was not able to attend the Florence Teen Council, but congratulations to everybody involved. Uh, as I read it, it said the, uh, the rating was a five out of a highest of five average. So that would tell me that's 100% five, and I thought that was just awesome. I love the fact that the things the kids liked <coughs> was talking about uh, fear and how to handle it, and uh, I saw a lot about leadership, and um, I think 16 entities attended here. I mean, that is tremendous, so uh, congratulations. That was terrific. I noticed in the C-Click Fix, um, uh, was on the town manager report and I just want to say again I walked the streets and I saw they're trimming the trees outside the police station Padilla Park I know director King has a big uh, opening coming up but they were out there painting the fences trimming the trees I mean it's looking really really good so I appreciate it because you know our townspeople have been getting kind of hit over the head about weeds and it's nice to see the town cleaning up our act and taking the leadership uh, role um, I did want to also mention that uh, I was at Pinnell Partners a couple Fridays ago, and it was all about uh, Proposition 486. And so you all may not know all the propositions. There are a lot of them on the ballot. Make sure you vote this year. But if you drive on any road in Pinnell County, I would urge you to look up what Prop 486 is about and consider its importance to our town in keeping up all of our roads. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Adam. Council Member Maldonado. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, first, um, I'm still looking for veteran families that are in need for Christmas. Um, just get a hold of me, um, either through staff or, or my cell phone, if you have it, um, or on the town website. The second thing is tomorrow is drug awareness and social media information night at the Coolidge Florence Elks at six. I'll be there for that. Um, third is a veteran stand, 12th annual veteran stand down and resource fair, um, McCartney Road in Coolidge on Saturday, and it's from nine to one. So if you know of a veteran in need, um, uh, please bring him out to that event. Um, and finally, I'd like to thank the, the Florence Cemetery Ad Hoc Committee we had our last, or close to second to last uh, meeting this past week, and a lot of work went into, the, into that package with the committee members. I just wanna thank them for their time coming together and making that possible. Um, and then I'd like to thank my fellow council member also for uh, being there when I couldn't be there to, to run the meeting, uh, uh, council member Buccellato and uh, yeah, that hopefully we should be seeing this as a, an agenda item before this council uh, changes hands. So thank you. Thank you both for taking a lead on that committee as well. Council Member Larson. Well, I hate to be a downer, but um, there was some things that I needed to say, especially with today being Domestic Violence Awareness Month and the proclamation. <coughs> I think everything um, comes to a point where things just need to be said. So I wrote up some things, so bear with me. Uh, when you think of domestic violence, it's not just bruises and broken bones. There's so much more that goes on, from the extreme, extreme temperament changes, manipulation, demands, control, stalking, and fear that is driven into the victims. Today is more than a month that is to bring a and I know I'm going to mess this up. Today is more than a month to bring attention by merely lighting up the town hall purple, wear purple badges, or put magnets on police cars. This month is about being a call to action. While we have officers, prosecutors, and judges who see these offenses on a daily basis and take appropriate actions to protect the victims, we have too many instances of domestic violence where the police tell them to go get a gun, get a dog, 
get a new router, get a security system, while not taking action to stop the actual crime or do the due diligence to investigate the crime and forwarding the case to the prosecutor. We have a county attorney's office that goes from the, having a plea deal in front of the offender and without notice suddenly the case is closed or the case when the offender is jailed and the, and the case disappears from there. We have judges who won't allow extensions for actual evidence to be collected or who won't or who won't allow police reports to be entered based on technicalities, re-traumatizing the victim over and over. See, this isn't hypothetical. This happens here, to our neighbors, in our county, to our friends and family. This is a call to action. This is a month to say our system is broken. This is a month we analyze our policies and procedures and we make sure they are followed. This is a month to ensure no victim goes unheard. I commend those who work with these victims and who stand by their side to find truth and to help them find justice and protection. May we all learn from them and honor their time and dedication to this cause. As truly lives can be saved and other victims saved from abuse, we must do better. Laws and policies must be changed and there is no better time than the present. Council Member Neal. I uh, had a, we had uh, several people come up asking me about the roundabout and the lighting. Just if we can have someone put something out about when the town of Florence sign will be lit up and the lighting around the roundabout will be lit up. That would be very nice to get that out to the public. I've had a lot of people ask about that. Um, <clears throat> the Gophers are still undefeated. Unfortunately, they had a two-week layoff because we had the team uh, forfeit on us. Sometimes coming back off for a two-week layoff could be a little something, but uh, it's still go Gophers. Y'all have a blessed week. Council Member Bucciolato. I won't repeat what's already been said, but I just wanted to remind everybody that on the 18th, um, Third Fridays kicks off. So come out and celebrate your local businesses and get you something to eat, drink, or buy something from one of the vendors to show your support. Um, and I just wanted to say that to the staff, um, thank you so much. This is, it's really nice reading the manager's reports and the staff reports, director's reports, and getting a lot of information from them. So I just wanted to tell everybody good job, and I see you. Thanks. Vice Mayor. Well, um, traditionally, October is a very busy start of our cool month season. I don't know when that's supposed to start with the weather, but it's starting here in Florence. We have a lot of events here in the next, uh, well, for the next few months, there's a lot of things going on. So uh, pay attention to our calendars and see what's happening with the town of Florence. Um, if you're looking for jobs, we have a lot of postings open, so look on the job board for, for jobs. We are looking for a lot of good qualified people. Um, and that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you so much. Going through that checklist in my head to see if there was anything that had not been already said. Um, and everything has been pretty well communicated. I do want to let everybody know that if you're not already registered to vote for the general election, please make sure that you do register to vote for the general election. You should have received an information um, booklet in the mail that goes through all of the different propositions and everything that you will see on your ballot. It is going to be a pretty lengthy time for voting. Um, they are anticipating probably it taking about 10 to 15 minutes per person to actually cast their ballot. So please go ahead and make your educated, informed votes based on the information that you have. And please exercise your right to vote. It is very important. We do have an executive session this evening. So I need a motion to adjourn to executive session. I make a motion that we adjourn to executive session. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, we are adjourned. Thank you so much, and thank you, as always, for being here this evening.